we have a rock kitty. Hey, Junior Rock Hounds. This is my cat, Absinthe. Uh, she decided that she wanted to hang out with us for the video. Uh, this video, we're gonna be learning about crystals. And if you wanna earn your badge for this video, just simply click on the link below and there will be a quiz where you can fill it out and earn your badge. So to start off, what is a crystal? A crystal is a pure form of a mineral which arranges itself in a symmetrical and ordered fashion. And there are several different structures that a crystal normally takes. Uh, there are six families, in fact, as you can see here on the table. I have uh, cutouts that I've made which represent the different crystal structures. Uh, the first crystal structure is cubic. And a cubic crystal structure, all of the sides are equal in length. Uh, some common minerals that form in a cubic structure are halite, which halite is a common mineral that you actually have in your house right now. If you Google it, you'll find out what it is. Fluorite also forms in a cubic structure. And a cubic structure can look either like this diamond shape or it can look like a perfect cube. And that's actually why we call it a diamond shape is because another mineral that forms in a cubic structure is diamond. So the next crystal structure is tetragonal. And tetragonal is like cubic. As you can see, it looks like a cube. But the only difference is instead of having all of the different sides being of equal length, these have two equal lengths, but one side is of a different length. And a common mineral that forms in the tetragonal structure is apophyllite. And this beautiful apophyllite uh, crystal specimen I actually got from my friend Owen. Hi Owen, if you're watching. There's also or thrombic crystals, which like tetragonal, they all have 90 degree angles, but the three different sides are all different lengths. So with orthrhombic, all different lengths, tetragonal, two of the lengths are the same, one is different, and then cubic, all the sides are equal length. And two minerals that form in the orthrhombic crystal system are aragonite and topaz. The fourth crystal system is monoclinic. And a common mineral that forms in the monoclinic crystal system is stilbite. And apophyllite, which we talked about over here, actually often forms with stilbite. And that's what you're seeing here. The fifth crystal form is triclinic. And triclinic is actually very similar to orthrhombic in the fact that it has no links that are the same, but like monoclinic, it's slightly tilted so that none of the angles are 90 degrees. Some of the minerals that form in the triclinic shape are turquoise, rhodonite, and amazonite. And so that's the first five, and they're, they're all pretty closely related. And then finally we have hexagonal crystals, which have six different sides. And there's some crystal systems that you might see on the internet where they call out seven different crystal systems. And the seventh crystal system, they're actually splitting hexagonal into two groups, into trigonal and hexagonal. Common crystals that form in the hexagonal form are quartz, here is a lovely quartz crystal that my friend Rick Kennedy uh, actually mined himself out of Hallelujah Junction. And I actually kept the very cool mica that forms on it. You can actually clean these uh, smoky quartz crystals. I chose to let, leave the mica on it because I think it looks magical. Yeah, I think we did all of the crystals. So now that we've done all of the sciencey part, more science. This is a crystal growing kit I bought off of Amazon. And if you would like to join me, uh, you can actually purchase it in the link below. 
For this crystal experiment, we want to make sure that an adult is present and supervising all of the action. So here I am putting on all of my protective equipment. I put on goggles, gloves, and an apron. You will be using boiling water, so you want to make sure to be careful. Uh, make sure to measure it precisely. And you do have to be careful with this, and I'm adding the crystals to the solution. And you have to stir it a lot. Then you have to wait 20 minutes. And then you pour it into the plastic cup. And then during this part, I actually use the time that you wait for the solution to cool even further to create my other solutions for my other crystals. And so I'm just repeating the process and it's a lot, a lot, a lot of stirring. More stirring. And here, after all of the solution has cooled, and again, you need to wait at least 20 to 30 minutes, but then you get to add these fun little crystals and you get to watch the solution change colors. And the most important thing here is to make sure that the solution has cooled so it won't dissolve your crystals. And this is actually after just the first day, there was a lot of crystal growth. And then here's the finished crystals, and I think that they look absolutely beautiful. I was stunned with just the height of the crystals and their quality. And so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it inspires you to grow your own crystals. Thank you for watching.